This qaza, qaza of salah. I don't know what this qaza is. I've looked through the works of the fuqaha. They only come this qaza or qada when a person falls into a deep sleep, a person forgets, a person goes in a state of loses their mind, becomes intoxicated, becomes uh, absent minded, loses their faculties, person is maybe some, some obstacles in their way. That's been discussed. But as for I'm in my workplace, or I'm working with non Muslims, I'll go home and I'll pray my daughter, my asr, my mother, my isha in two minutes and jump into bed, and that's my prayer done. Which book of fiqh is that? Can you please tell me which book of fiqh does that exist in? Or is that your own fiqh? Is that your own fiqh that you brought over to this country? Because you know, when I was, they always, say, they always get this question, Sheikh, you know when I was back home, hey, mashallah, I used to pray five times a day, but since I've come here, I don't find the time. Billions of people are praying all the time. They have time to pray in different countries. So now when you come here, you decided to come here. So now you decide to bring your Islam with you as well. Not hide your Islam. Not conceal your Islam. Not present a political style of Islam. Political understanding. Now when it politically serves you, then all cameras are on you that you're reading your salah. You're going on hajj. You're coming in a masjid for your political votes that people should vote for me. That's the type of Muslims we find. And then they remember Allah. Then they remember to come into the masjid and to muster up the people. Don't forget to vote for me. Don't forget I'm al haji so and so. And all your businesses are haram, fully licensed restaurants, selling alcohol, gambling, selling haram. And then come here and complain to us, you know, my, my son's a harami. Your son is a harami because we're eating haram all his life. That's what happens. You deal in haram, your children are eating haram. Your children become haram. They want to come and tell us that you are in a bad state. Take your riba. Every other Pakistani, two, three homes taken on riba. It's a darura. It's a necessity. What, five homes? Six homes? Seven homes? The whole street? On a loan? On a mortgage? And then saying, well, you know, the Sharia allows this. Go and read the Quran in great detail. The Quran talks about various sins. And only one sin in the Quran it mentions that if you get involved inside riba and you don't give it up, then know for a fact that war has been declared by Allah and His Messenger upon you. That's enough for a Muslim to begin to think. It doesn't say about drinking alcohol or gambling or stealing or lying. Only for riba. If you take riba, live a life of interest, Allah and His Messenger have declared war upon that individual. That's why there is no barakah in your life. That's why you have sleepless nights. That's why you have restless nights. Because you've got that suit wrapped around your neck. You've got it wrapped around your neck, that's why you can't sleep at night. You don't know what to do. How to come out of it. And in your greed and your desire, you just go get involved in another one. And then you complain about your children. You're complaining about them. Hadith is clear. A Muslim prays, فَمَأْكُلُوا حَرَامُ وَمَشْرَبُوا حَرَامُ وَمَلْبُسُوا حَرَامُ He's eating his haram, he's drinking his haram, his clothing is haram. فَأَنَّا يُسْتَجَابَ لَهُ And then you expect us to answer that person's prayer? If your life is haram, you're praying to Allah, that's one major obstacle. If your earnings are haram, your life is haram, it becomes a great big barrier between you and your prayers going to Allah. And all the time people are saying, give me some wazifa, give me some dhikr from the Quran to help me come out of my problem. This is the greatest wazifa, is go back and sort out your bank balance and give up the loan. That's the wazifa I give you. <clears throat> Don't think you'll get some other wazifa for me that I'm going to write out something for you. That's not the type of cleric that I am that will give you some special dhikr to get you to sleep at night. I'm telling you what the special dhikr is. Go to the bank and sort out your loan. That's what you need to go and do and you're, you're a vicar and your life will become a content life. And inshallah your children as well will begin to become more obedient towards you. What goes around comes around. If we disobey our parents today, don't be surprised tomorrow. 
that our children disobey us. So we need to teach our children about the concept of being good towards parents, about focusing upon their life, because that's what makes a wholesome society. These people, the wider community around us, we all know they don't care about their parents anymore. One of the biggest businesses at the moment is their own pensioners home, taking care of elderly individuals. It's a big industry at the moment, because that's what they do, send their parents there. We don't want our youth and our children to be doing that, but they, unfortunately some of them are going on that path. Some of them become so intellectually, academically advanced. They feel ashamed to stand next to their parents because my parents can't speak English properly. I can't show people that my father speaks in an accent. This is how some young people have become. That's your father at the end of the day. That's the one who brought you up. That's the one who took care of you. That's probably the one who made sure they paid your fees, made sure you went to school in time, made sure you become a decent, educated individual. Today, this is what you give them back in return. And likewise, the youth that we have, what are we going to give in return back to the society? The various massages that we have, we claim to have the skills, the ability. Can't see much progression. Can't see much progression when we're trying to give back to the society. So these are the few words I want to share advise myself first and the rest of the brothers about trying to take advantage of a time even though some of us may not be young but still are young inshallah to try and do more to help the deen of Allah and to help our community strengthen our community help the wider people around us to become more focused and committed towards the deen of Allah and the Allah Brother mentioned that if everybody can uh, give us standing or the forms of contribution towards the Islamic Center, and those things which are done even a small amount on a regular basis is more beloved to Allah and Allah. You can see the, uh, the efforts that the brothers, mashallah, are doing here in this local center. So on your way out, inshallah, do contribute towards uh, the center life. We want to take a, a standing order for even something small and contribute towards the, uh, the running of the masjid and to facilitate other facilities as well, inshallah. Thank you.